Now in this tub is my favourite bait, the humble maggot, and I'm going to show you how you can have a great bit of pole fishing with just one pint of maggots here in the autumn. Okay, so we're planning to have a lovely day's fishing with a simple, simple approach. Literally all I've got is a pint of red maggots. Just bought them out of the shop, just over three quid, brilliant, as fresh as they come. That's the bait, I've got no ground bait, no pellets, nothing. That is all we've got. And I'm going to show you that you don't need loads of bait. If you just want to have a few bites, have a nice day's fishing or a morning's fishing, you don't need loads of fancy stuff. Granted, that's all great, but if you just want to come, get a few bites on a pole, this is a brilliant, brilliant way to fish. First thing we've got to chat about is the venue. Pick somewhere with a nice mixed head of fish. This lake, I could catch F1s, I could catch small carp, I could catch barbel, eye, chub, roach, you name it, they're in this lake. So I know I'm going to get plenty of bites. And because I know there's plenty of fish in this lake, I don't have to go far for them. Even though it's autumn, we're in November now, the fish are on the back foot a bit, I know that all the deep water on this pond is pretty close in. It's got a, like a shallow sort of island out in front of me that's like a sunken island that goes up to about three foot. Don't really want to get involved with that. I probably haven't got enough bait to do two lines really. I'm just going to concentrate all my efforts at just five meters. So nice and simple, nice and effective. Now, because we just want to keep things simple, I've set up just one rig. It's actually quite deep. It's probably, it's a good five foot. In fact, it's one, two, three, four, five, close to six foot. So I've set up a four by 16 Cipri float, which is about right, I think. You could fish more through the water with maybe a four by 12, but I want to keep things simple and a four by 16 Cipri He's going to get my bait to the bottom. I want to try and catch these fish on the bottom, keep them down there. So my rig reflects that. I don't really want to be faffing around with the rig falling through the water slowly. I want to get my bait to the bottom, my loose feed and my hook bait and catch them on the bottom. The sipper has got a nice 1.7 mil bristle so you can see it. Light's a bit funny at this time of year, but I can definitely see this, so no problems there. And then all I've got down at the business end is a bulk of um, number nines two number 10 droppers and then I've got a six inch hook length one just top there can't wait to get going can they uh, I've just got 010 hook length which is just about two and a bit pound and then I've got a size 18 hook nice fine barbless pattern which is a B911F1 elastic super light because like I say I could be catching anything I could use pink zip but I know there is a lot of F1s in this lake so I've gone for the yellow I could always put the pink on later but the yellow it'll come out if I catch roach and stuff but if I do hook a few F1s or maybe a, a barbel or something like that I've got every chance to land it I've put a little cad pot on I'm going to feed everything through the pot initially I'm not going to really put like an initial bait in or anything like that I've only got like that like I say I've got a pint of maggots I don't want to get giddy and fr keep throwing loads of maggots in or anything like that. I want to keep it nice and simple, nice and tight. I may need to throw some maggots in to draw some fish, but we'll cover that in a minute. I think that's it. That's as simple as it is. We'll talk about the fishing because that's the most important bit. Turn in one pint of maggots into a big bag of fish. Okay, so let's kick off this session because I don't know about you, I want to get going. It's a lovely day. We've just had Storm Kevin, would you believe? And today, the day after, beautiful blue skies, bright sun, pleasure to be out. Right, I'm going to kick off a session. I'm not going to big pot or anything like that. I have got the big pot set up, but I'm hopefully not going to use it. I'm just going to put two red maggots on, hooked through the thin end. I like that because it keeps plenty of hook exposed and then I'm going to feed everything through the pot to start with so I'm going to put 20 or so maggots in I suppose and then we're going to pick a far bank marker which is a silver birch tree on that far bank nice and positive I can't really go wrong with that and then I'm just going to pot in my maggots nice and accurate and then what I like to do is lift my whole rig out of the water pop the bulk where that little commotion is where the maggots just went in and put my bulk right on top of that and then allow it to settle and then lower it in right on top of those maggots so everything's presented nice and accurate then my bulk and my droppers are taken into effect and then I'm dotted right down really important that and that is one of the beauties of these sippery floats dotted down floats will catch you more fish at this time of year because you're seeing those little indications those little touches straight away the 1.7 mil hollow bristle is perfect for dotting down because you can still see it you can put it down into that surface film like i've got it there and you can still see it perfect so it's a lovely lovely float pattern for that and then we've just got to wait and see 
how this swim develops, I suppose, is a little, look, the float's just moving to the side. Yeah, thought there was a fish on. See, that, that's how important it is. Look, the float wasn't even, didn't even get pulled under at all then. It just was dragging along the surface and we're into our first fish of the session, which is gonna be a cruising by the looks of this. Yep, little cruising. Look at that. And that's it. We haven't had to do anything extravagant to get that bite. We've just gone in. There's a rob in there right near the camera. Beautiful little cruising. Look at him. What a lovely little fish. Right in the top lip. And that is a prime example of why you've got a fish dotted down at this time of year. Because that fish didn't even pull the float under. Which is amazing, isn't it? I'm actually going to go in with single maggot. And just see. And no need to change anything. We've got a quick bite there. So again, 20 maggots or so. You'll notice that I pop the maggots in first and then put my rig over the top. It's quite a deep lake, this. Six foot. Which I know is not deep, but it still takes them maggots quite a bit of time to get near the bottom. Like I say, six foot, almost exactly six foot today. And if I was to put my rig in first, then put my maggots over the top, the maggots might only be 10 inches down by the time my, bulk's, my rig's settled. So, there's a chance I get liners. Oh, another bite there straight away. So putting the maggots in first and then putting the rig over the top just gives me a few seconds to get the rig in position without having any problems. And we've got another nice fish here. Could be another crew in this actually. Yep. Lovely. Another nice cruising. So that single maggot got us a bite much faster. Taking it right down that one. Unusual for crewies. Another nice little fish. And that's what this lake's all about. You're getting lots of bites of lots of, like, smaller fish. So you ca you'll be catching F1s, cruisions, you name it. I've even caught dace on this lake before. I'll just pop them maggots in again. 20 or so maggots. There's no, we're getting bites, so there's no need to change anything at the moment. We've, we've had two trucks and we've caught two fish. So we're just going to see how it develops. So pop the maggots in. Nice and accurate. You see, it's a little gap between my rig being settled now, so I can imagine the maggots are getting a good way down before my rig's actually fishing. So just lower it right on top of them maggots. And that zipper goes straight down because it's got a slim body, so it, it settles immediately. There's no wasted time waiting for the bristle to go down or anything like that. Oh, missed a bite that time. It's just, it's just fishing straight away. And that is the advantage with slim floats when you're fishing for, you know, shy biting fish. You know, you can get everything settled really quickly. Might be a little, little hold up there actually. I haven't fished this lake for a good few years now and I'm not sure what the stocking's like these days or if there's many little fish or anything, but it's normally pretty, you know, good stamp fish in this lake. Like them cruisions and fish like that, so. There you go. We've got this time. Something different this chuck, look. Little skimmer. Just a little baby one. And that's what this is all about. Look, I've caught three fish and we've not even broken stride yet. We're just getting a bite of chuck already. Which is brilliant. Exactly what we wanted. So let's get some more maggots in the pot. You see that? I'm actually going to up it a little bit. What we'll do when we've finished this pint of maggots, we'll get the net out and find out how many fish we've caught. So we've caught three so far. We'd have my clicker out, wouldn't it? A real pro would have his clicker out. I'm just accurately putting that rig over the top. And as soon as I feel the bulk, you can feel the bulk at the bottom when the rig's settled, then you can lower your float in. Because everything's you know, sort of in position, I can just lower it bang down. If I just dropped it all in a heap, it might get tangled as it's falling through the water. We don't want tangles, we want to be nice and smooth. And there's no little tiny indications. Look, my float's barely moving. Look at that, my, my float barely moved. Again, that yellow zip's working lovely. Another little skimmer. And we're having it. Four bikes already, four fish. This time's a little skimmer, but great action. You know, we're November, so 
the heady days of summer are over now, so we're all about having a busy day without breaking the bank today. So put my maggots in. So I've got the, the yellow zip in. Pink would be lovely for this fish that we're catching at the minute, but there are a lot of F1s and stuff in here, and if they turn up, which they might, they might not, they might. Not too fussed if they do or they don't. Um, we're going to catch them, so there we go, get the rig in. I can feel the bulk's there now. Blow it straight in, and you can see the float's going straight to a dot because we've got the right sort of float on, that slim pattern. And if you watch the float on the big do for now, the float will barely go under. Just the tiniest little indication. Look at that little lift there. Look at that look. You just, if you had any amount of float sticking out or a really fat tipped float, you just probably wouldn't see those indications. So it is good to sort of scale down a little bit in the winter. Look at the float barely moved and we've got what feels like the best fish of the session so far but, but that just shows you the importance of that light setup but it's just another cruising but that just barely even moved the float you know it's a combination of shy biting species anyway and obviously it's getting colder water i can feel it's the first time i've put my hands in the water and it's felt really cold this time okay so we're probably halfway through our bait now which means we've probably caught seven or eight different types of fish we've not had any like better quality fish yet but we've had crusions brown goldfish gudgeon roach eyed skimmers just brilliant brilliant fishing and every single chuck in it's a bite you know you put in that few little maggots and you get a bite but i thought i'd just show you a couple of quick tips that'll help your maggot fishing now the first one is hooking your bait. Now, the traditional way has always been to hook it through the fat end like that. So you've got the maggot nicked on at the fat end. That is a traditional way of doing it, and that's fine. But when it comes to hooking two or even three maggots, reversing the maggot and going in through the thin end leaves much more of the hook exposed. So you've got two maggots there, nicely presented. See that? which means that you've got more of the hook exposed. So you've got two maggots, and even though that's a, a small size 18 hook, the fat end of the maggot is not impacting how much hook is showing, and I believe bumps you less fish. Now when it comes to buying your bait, go to a good tackle shop, a shop that turns over plenty of maggots. You want nice fresh bait, you want the stuff with the black spots in it, nice and fresh, just come out of the farm that week, and it'll be good to go. Get some maize on them, and they'll last you for ages. If you've got a fridge at home, they'll last you for ages. You can keep them in the bait tub with the lid on, no problems. But if you want them to last really long, put them in a bag, tie them up so there's no air in it, almost like you'd like vacuuming them almost, pop them in the fridge, open them up every day, let them come around, get a bit of breath of air, and then maggots will last you for ages. So a couple of tips there. Maggots, over three pound a pint nowadays, but they'll last for ages as long as you've got a fridge and you look after them. So they're well worth the money of maggots. The final quick tip, is plumbing up when you're fishing with maggots. Now, when you're fishing with pellets, you want everything as precise as possible, plumbing up to the base of the bristle almost so that everything registers. But when it comes to maggots, you can be a bit, you can have a bit more leniency with your plumbing up. You can, don't be frightened to put two, three inches laid on the bottom, especially on windy days. Today, we've got beautiful flat calm conditions, so it's not a problem. I can fish with about an inch on the bottom and it's perfect. I'm hooking every fish in the top lip. But if it's windy, don't be scared to put two, three, even four inches of line on the bottom so you can get a nice still hook bait. I think anglers are too scared to do that nowadays because we're all plumbing up so precisely. But having 
a bit more line on the bottom, sort of plumbing up halfway along the stem, something like that. Even to the base of the float completely, the, the stem can catch you loads of fish, especially in the winter when the fish aren't as active and they want a nice still bait. Putting a bit of line on the bottom can really score when it comes to maggots. Okay, so the maggots are actually lasting surprisingly well. Just potting them in, being really sensible with the bait has been just good enough to get me a bite every single chuck in from all sorts of different species. It's been great. But what I'm gonna do to get, try and go out on a flurry, I could just keep plodding along like this and end up with a lovely mixed bag of fish. But me, the match angler in me wants to up the ante. So what I'm gonna do, it's noticeable that every time I fill my pot right up, I catch a slightly better fish. Now, whether that's just because more baits get into the bottom, allowing the bigger fish a chance to get a look in or what, I'm not quite sure. Or maybe they're just a bit more hungry than I first thought, maybe. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just maybe up the ante and start throwing bait in and being quite aggressive because I've got loads of maggots left. I've still got certainly half my bait left there. And I wanna just make sure I'm giving myself the best chance. And I'm, I've been fishing for a couple of hours now and the fishing's been wonderful. And I could just, like I say, just plod on like this, no problem, and end up, I mean, look, we've got another little F1 there. I could just keep going like this and end up with a lovely bag of fish, like all mixed different size F1s, crusions, eyed, gudgeon, <laughs> roach, skimmers, you name it, you catch it on this lake. So what's obvious is that if I just keep going with this little pot, I'm gonna catch fish all day long. Loads of different fish. I mean, apparently maggots is gonna last me all day, no problem at all. So I wanna up the ante a little bit, go out on a big finish. So we're gonna start loose feeding. I reckon if I carried on like that with a pot, I'd catch a fish every single chuck in, I'd have a great day, and I'd probably have enough bait left to come again another day. I'd probably have half a pint of maggots left, no problem. But we're gonna try and up the ante a bit, see if we can have a big finale. Maybe catch a few F1s, a couple of better eyed, maybe even a few skimmers. And go out on a big note, but it's been great fishing. And like I say, it's amazing how many fish you can catch with so little bait. A pint of maggots at this time of year goes a long way. Especially on a you know prolific lake like this that's mixed, you know, and granted every time you go your float goes under, it's a not only is it a different species, but it's um a quality fish as well. There's not, not many tiny fish in this lake. So you might notice I've just put a tiny little blob of bristle grease on my uh, float just to help it hold up a bit. I was missing an odd bite where I was being a bit too quick on the bite, whereas now I just want to delay it a little bit. So a little blob of grease, just allowing me to just wait a fraction of a second longer to make sure the fish is on before lifting. And like I say, another cruiser. These have been the probably the main fish today, to be fair. I'll be catching loads of them. Lovely little fish. Double maggot at the moment. Looks right in the scissors, that one. Lovely. So that worked. Let's just... Like I say, if I just keep potting the maggots in, these maggots are going to last forever. For those people who say fishing is getting too, ex too expensive, if you use your bait right, you can get a lot of fishing out of even just a pint of maggots. So, just going to throw in twice. It's always a good idea to throw in twice because I think the fish come to the noise of the first lot and then follow the second lot down. I think that seems to work well. And I know there's a lot of fish in here, so I can put plenty in and not worry too much about overfeeding the swim or anything like that. There's so many indications, it's great. Little fish there. Struck at nothing there really. <laughs> Amazing fishing, but this, you know, at the moment, the weather's so mild. I mean, we've just had that storm and the weather's just incredibly mild all over the country and I was out fishing the other day and there was a little gang of ducklings, like a few day old, old ducklings, which is incredible at this time of year, really. 
It is noticeable if I put double maggot on. The fish aren't really any different. They're just, you know, same sort of stamp. You just have to wait a little bit longer for a bite. So I think I'm quite happy just fishing single maggot, to be fair. Another cruising, bad luck, sir. You can now tell the, the fight's like jaggedy. Yep. A little Gorgeous fish, though. Look at them. Little beauties. Who wouldn't want to have a net full of them? So I'm going to go back to the single maggot. Just because I don't, like I say, I don't feel like I'm getting about any quicker on double maggot, and I don't feel like the fish are any different stamp either, so just get the bait in. Uh, we're really up in the ante now. I'm feeding three times the amount there now than what I was when I was just potting in. The only thing I must stress when you do this is it's keen, it's important not to get giddy with your bait. Um, it's very easy to get throwing loads of bait in and the fish will come shallow and all that. We don't really want that, we just want the fish on the bottom. So it's important to throw your bait in and then catch your fish and then start again, not get too giddy. It's just cruisings every chuck in at the moment. Who can complain at this fishing though? Lovely cruisings every single go in. Oh, it must be me. Oh, I've lost my Discorger, my lucky Discorger. Oh, it's not, it's there. That is a result. I've had that Discorger since I was a kid. When I used to live in there, there used to be a little tackle shop called Mally Johnson's. And uh, that shop was where I bought all my early fishing tackle, really. And also where... I bought that Discordia, must be when I was at school, so 20 years ago, <laughs> which is amazing, isn't it? Now, the only thing I'm thinking, because a lot of these fish are cruising, I'm, I'm considering putting a shot on my hook length, much closer to my hook length, um, just because I feel like I'm not seeing the bites very quick. I really like, you know, if I put a number 10, two inches from the hook, I'm going to see the bites much quicker. Not that that's a, you know, we're here for a nice, base fishing really we're not trying to catch like match style but that being said I do still want to maximize my day and the fishing's just excuse the plane but the fishing's just incredible really good fishing and it's just just back, it's just gonna end, it's just we're just gonna have a beautiful bag of these cruisions. It's amazing how many must be in. You notice I didn't feed that time, and I'm not gonna feed again. Like I, I put a lot of maggots in to catch two cruisions, so I can't I'm gonna try and catch like two, even three fish off a feed and be really disciplined, which is hard for me to do because I'm not I'm not a disciplined person when it comes to feeding. <laughs> Indication there straight away. I just put that, that grease on my float and it's just giving me a little bit more show on the float. And then what, what I might actually do is try and feed when I get bite. So like now. And then it's sort of ready for the next time I go in. I think that's gonna be a nice way of doing it. So then maggots are falling through the water now while I'm sorting this fish out, unhooking it rebaiting and then hopefully by the time I get in those maggots will be on the bottom and I'll get another quick bite off one of these ravenous little crewies. Okay so we've had a just a wonderful day sort of a few hours fishing here and it just shows you that the fishing you can have with simple tackle, simple tactics, we're fishing a nice short pole, we've picked a water that we know has got plenty of fish in it, mixed fish, so we're gonna, we know we're going to have a few bites. I think that's important when you're thinking about your days fishing, especially at this time of year, autumn and winter, pick places that you know you're going to get action because the last thing you want to do 
drag yourself out of bed and go to a venue that has got no winter form and you end up struggling. You want to pick places like this, these small waters, the fish really can't get away from you too much. You're going to get bites, you're going to get action. We've used, we've gone down our shop, we've bought a nice fresh pint of maggots and I've got loads left. So I could easily have another little session with these. So throwing maggots has worked really well. It's got us a, a nice finish. We're catching a few skimmers, we're catching crusions. We're catching a bit of everything. And it just shows you how with simple tactics you can have a great few hours fishing and it doesn't have to cost you the earth. You don't need loads of bait. So there we go, super simple tactics. Maggot fishing at its best. We've got crusions, we've got F1s, we've got iron, roach, skimmers, you name it, they're in there. Super simple tactics, all for the price of a pint of maggots and a day ticket. What more can you ask for at this time of year?